Hi everyone, it's Laura Binding and today I'm going to be showing you how we do these finishing end caps on Viking Knit jewellery. In these examples I've actually filled the Viking Knit itself with gemstones and I will touch on how we actually approach that as well. The tools that you'll need for this project are going to be your lazy daisy tool and the draw plate. I have the half inch tool just here, the quarter inch tool just here, the draw plate and the drawing pin that comes with the tool as well. The tools that you'll need for the project will be your flush cutters, your round nose pliers, chain nose pliers. These are optional but quite handy for finishing off your jewellery and these are your bail making pliers. I've gone ahead and created a section of Viking knit. Now I've actually used a larger tool for this just so that you can see clearly what I'm doing. I'm just going to show you how you actually remove the knit from the tool. So I'm actually going to push, push the little daisy down so that the loops become raised. Then I'm going to take my flush cutters and just cut the top of those loops. that's been removed from the tool. There is a video that I have done already on showing you how to do the Viking knit itself so this is going to be a follow-on technique. Taking my round nose pliers you'll see that there's going to be one tiny piece of wire coming out from the knit and if there's more than that you need to give it just a little shake just to make sure there's no loose wires because there should only be one. What I like to do is take that wire and just roll that around the loop so that there are no sharp edges. You would make sure that the length of this is going to be the length that you want for your necklace piece or your bracelet. Just be aware that when you draw this through a draw plate that it will actually be a longer piece of knit so you don't always need the exact length of the finished piece. I always tend to go for around about the same size if not maybe an inch or two smaller because that depends how much you actually want to reduce the knit itself down. When it comes to adding gemstones there are two ways of doing it, it really does depend on the design. You can just drop the gemstones into it if you want to, which is what I've done on this piece here. I literally just placed the amethyst in and just gently stretched the chain over the gemstones and as you can see those stones have got a little bit of movement they're not held in with wire they're just sort of in there but because of the chain itself they can't go anywhere another way to do this um, and it is quite important if you're say using smaller beads and the rungs are a little bit longer there's quite a big risk of the gemstones falling through the chain itself so for example, I'm going to take one of these smaller ones, these are about a 4 mil, and place that. Now I'm holding the end just because I haven't actually closed that just yet. But if I just place this in here, it's just going to go straight through these rungs. When they're drawn through, it might be a bit better, but just for security and ease of mind, I'm going to add them to some wire. This will also help when you're drawing the chain through the draw plate. What I'm going to do first of all is close the end here. So you'll see I've got a little bit of wire left on from my knit itself. If you haven't got any left then add a little bit just to do this stage. But it's good if you can try to allow a little length of wire just for the finishing. And all I'm going to do is kind of stitch this together. So I'm bringing the wire across and up and into one of the bottom rungs. And I'm just going to pull that so it's closing that gap and then over to the opposite one that I haven't caught yet and bring that around and it's fine to use your pliers to make sure you can get a nice grip and now that's actually been closed so what I'm going to go and do now is take another length of 0.8 wire this length of wire is going to need to be long enough to go through the whole piece and it depends on how you're going to finish it. I'm going to show you how to create the clasp out of this as well. So for this I need enough wire to be able to go through the whole piece of jewellery and enough to be able to make the clasp and hook at the very end. I've taken about 50 centimetres, that's going to be way too much but I'd rather have too much than not enough. 
I'm feeding this straight into the knit. You've got to be careful because it will try and escape. So it goes all the way through in a nice straight line and it meets your other wire at the other end. Okay. Now you can twist these if you want to, just for the moment, just to secure them. And that's given me a nice secure attachment. And now what I'm going to do is feed on all of my gemstones so that they drop into the knit itself. I've added the gemstones to the wire and as you can see they're actually coming out of the knit itself. This is because this tube is going to actually shrink quite a lot and as it does it's obviously going to get longer so I've allowed for the gemstones so that when this knit itself reduces it should go over those gemstones. If you're making this for a bracelet I recommend adding the amount of gemstones on for the for the length of bracelet that you want because this chain will obviously stretch over. Now what I'm going to do first of all is actually gently hand draw this. I'm just gently stretching this knit and as you can see it's nearly gone over the whole length already. This is because I used the half inch tool so the rungs were longer which means that when you reduce it the loops become more elongated and will actually go further. So there you have your section of beaded Viking knit. Now the finishing as I said is a couple of ways of finishing it but I'm going to show you the way to use the actual tool itself and to use the cone section on the end of the tool to create a nice almost like a bead cap kind of finish to your bracelet or necklace or however you want to incorporate this design. I've cut two 50 centimeter lengths of 0.8 gauge wire because I'm going to twist this wire to create a slightly different look and give a little bit more strength to the bead cap I'm about to do. I'm folding this in half so I've got the center just here and I'm going to take my round nose pliers placing them in I'm going to cross the wires over and I want to twist them. So I'm just going to take them nice and slowly. I'm just going to twist and rotate those two wires so that I get a nice even twist. So I'm just taking my finger and thumb, taking hold of those wires and twisting. Okay, and you can see you're getting a nice even twist. Keep that nice and steady. And I want to do this for the whole length of this wire. I'm then going to do the same with the other piece and the reason we cut them both at the same time is so that you know they'll be the same size. Once you've got a comfortable length of twisted wire if you find it easier you can remove the pliers and just hold it nice and steady just twist those wires together. You just want to get a nice consistent twist. You don't need to over twist, it doesn't need to be too tight, it just gives a nice finished look to the design. So I've twisted these until there's just a tiny bit left and what I'm going to do now is take in the quarter inch tool as opposed to the half inch because I need to create a cap that's going to sit nicely over this chain. If I was to use this tool it's going to create too big a cap. This one's a little bit more narrow and it'll be a perfect size. So because I've twisted this wire and I've got this loop, I can't actually use the hole that comes within the tool itself. But if you were just using plain wire, what you would do is feed this into the hole and just simply twist. What I'm going to do is take that little loop that we started with, just using my chain nose pliers, I'm just going to very gently flatten that so it's almost part of the twist. Picking up the tool. I'm going to leave about an inch and I'm just going to wrap the wire. So you can see I'm holding that probably about half the way down and I'm going to wrap this all the way down because I want to be able to get the slightly wider part of the cone. See I'm twisting that down to make sure that I can get that. And then I can come across to the top and just finish that 
in the top of the design. And that will flatten in. And there you've got your cone, twisted cone cap almost. I'm then going to go ahead, taking that little section that's still looped just here, and I want to twist that all the way in and almost rotate it and twist it, spiral it in to really narrow out the top of that cone. Place it back on if you want to just to get that shape. And there we go. Now remember this will actually add additional length to your bracelet so you have to factor that in if you want to use this as a finish. What I'm going to do is slide this straight onto the wire that's still coming out from the um, where we added the beads on and get that to sit nicely just over the end there. You want to push it because you want it to be really snug. You don't really want it moving about, you want it to be nice and locked into place. Okay. And I'm going to show you how we create the hook and eye as well to go with this. That's going to be done using the wire that's coming through the cone now. So having that in place, I will finish it off in a moment, but what I'm going to do is the loop section quickly. Now I'm going to come in with my bell making pliers and I'm going to grip the wire and I want to rotate it twice around the pliers. Now whichever size you want to use is up to you. I've gone for the larger size and I want this loop to be really close to the top of the cone. So you can see I'm really making sure that it's really close. So I've done one loop, open out your pliers, catch that second loop and then just doing a wrapped loop, taking that wire and bringing it around I'm just going to really move those pliers now and just really want to make sure that's locked into place so you can hold that loop and really lock that into place and then that's going to sit nicely at the top of that cone when you're happy with that you can come in with your flash cutters, trim that wire and make sure there's no edges okay and then we just now we've locked that all nice and securely into place just going to finish this section off here so to do this I'm just going to bring this wire around until there are no more twists and then I'm going to trim the two wires so it's probably about, probably a bit long, literally half of a centimetre or so. Then I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and just bring that around and into the knit. So you can see I'm hooking it behind one of these loops. So that's one. And there's the second one. And you want to make sure that those wires are tucked up into that sort of wrap there so if I show you up close you can see that there's no sharp edges that's really secure now that can't go anywhere I've gone ahead and added that other cap and I've already attached it and secured it so that I can show you the clasp section I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and go about an inch and a half up and what I'm going to do is fold this wire over pinch it nice and tight so I'm just taking my pliers to really get that nice and close so it's looking like that come down with your pliers and I like to hold it right towards the bottom as close as you can and then taking the tail of the wire bringing that all the way around same as we did with the loop and just really lock in and push in this cap into place as well I'm 
when you're happy go ahead and snip that okay make sure there's no sharp edges I'm going to come in with my round nose pliers and I'm just going to roll the very end into a little tiny loop taking my bell making pliers I'm going to come in and just roll this down and using my thumb just to get that sort of little angle here there you have your clasp bring this round into shape as I said this is a 0.8 wire for the knit itself so it is a very strong solid bracelet as you can see and it's been used you've used a, a 0.8 wire again in the middle of it you can bring that around lock that together and there is your finished bracelet I hope you like this project if you've got any questions please feel free to message me on my guest designer page and I look forward to seeing your makes